Hello and welcome to Dateline Abuja. I am Kayla Megwa. Security, they say, is everybody's business. So who's the weak link in this chain? Who's being sloppy and putting us all at risk? President Muhammadu Buhari has had to face the bulk of the criticism over the insecurity in the country, and understandably so. The buck stops at his table. For the nation's capital, the end of the year brings nightmares to many who live in Abuja's under-policed, poorly developed suburbs. But before we get to that, let's give you a rundown of the major happenings in Nigeria's seat of power. Despite a confirmation from the presidency on December 7, 2020, President Muhammadu Buhari has failed to honor the invitation by members of the House of Representatives to address them on the security situation in the country as plenary commenced on Thursday in his absence. A lawmaker from River State, Solomon Bob, raised the point of order over the president's refusal to honor the invitation of the House, seeking for an update from the speaker. Your point of uh, privilege is noted. Um, the channels of communication are uh, procedural and will await for official communication from Mr. President as opposed to newspaper reports. Just the day before, a statement had emanated from the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation, questioning the constitutional right of the National Assembly to summon the President on the operational use of the armed forces. The statement read, As the Commander-in-Chief, the President has exclusivity on security and has confidentiality over security. These are powers and rights he does not share. So by summoning the President on national security operational matters, the House of Representatives operated outside constitutional bounds. President's exclusivity of constitutional confidentiality investiture within the context of the Constitution remains sacrosanct. Still talking security, President Muhammadu Buhari on Tuesday in Abuja had a meeting with 36 state governors on the issue of security, charging them to work more with traditional rulers and community members to improve local intelligence gathering that will aid the work of security agencies. The president explained that the closure of the nation's land borders was partly an attempt to control the smuggling of weapons and drugs. And now that the message has sunk in with our neighbors, Nigeria will be reopening its borders very soon. On the issue of the NSARS protests and its hijack by hoodlums causing mayhem in the country, President Buhari sounded a strong warning about reoccurrence, saying that no responsible government will allow that to happen. He also noted that the foreign press coverage of the NSAR's violence was not balanced, citing specifically that CNN and BBC omitted the number of policemen killed, police stations that were raised, and the prisons that were thrown open for inmates to escape. In politics, the National Executive Committee of the All Progressives Congress has extended the tenure of the May Malabuni-led National Working Committee by six months. NEC approved the immediate dissolution of the party organs at the polling unit, ward, local government, state, and zonal levels, as well as the non-National Working Committee component of the National Executive Committee, as well as their immediate reconstitution and composition of these dissolved escorts to serve in their respective offices in a caretaker committee capacity. The INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, has been sworn in for a second term in office by President Muhammadu Buhari at the council chambers of State House in Abuja. President Muhammadu Buhari reappointed Professor Yakubu as chairman of INEC for another five year term on October the 27th. The National Assembly is holding a public hearing on the amendment of the electoral legal framework. Uh, this is important, and uh, this time around, working with the National Assembly will ensure the speedy passage of the amendment bill and once it is assented to it will help us enormously uh, in confronting um, the challenges ahead. And in judicial matters, the former chairman of the defunct pension reform task team, Mr. Abdul Rashid Mayna, on Thursday collapsed in court. The federal government is prosecuting Mr. Mayna on a 12 count charge of fraud and money laundering before a federal high court sitting in Abuja. Mr. Mena was recently extradited from Niger Republic after he jumped bail, escaping the country. The former pension boss collapsed when his counsel, Anayo Adibe, was addressing the court on his non-case submission before Justice Okonabang. The case has now been adjourned till December 21st and 22nd. Welcome back. In September this year, a memo from the Customs Service alleged that villages within and around the nation's capital were harboring Boko Haram terrorists.
who were allegedly planning an offensive against the country. Places like Kunyambush along Airport Road, Robochi Gwagwalada Forest, Kwaku Forest, Kuje, Unesha Forest in total local government area of Nataro State, and Gegu Forest close to Idu Town in Kogi State. At the time, the FCT commissioner assured residents of the FCT that all is being done to ensure their safety. As Christmas draws closer, we're reminded of the over 20 raids by kidnappers at Keti Village in December alone last year. Tunga Maje was also hit by kidnappers this year. Official figures say 10 people were kidnapped, but there are reports that that figure could be much more. The last thing we need is a return of Boko Haram attacks to the nation's capital after the military spent so many years ensuring that they never return. Our feature story looks at how secure the nation's capital is as the year draws to a close. Located on the western border of the Federal Capital Territory with Niger State, Tungamaje in Gwagwalada Area Council is 33 kilometers to Abuja city center. A largely agrarian community with few houses and populated by the Bagi speaking indigents of the FCT. It was a tale of horror and sadness on Thursday, September the 10th, 2020 after the community was invaded by gunmen who kidnapped some of the residents, including women and children. Eleven persons were taken during the attack. Five of them regained their freedom. Due to security reasons, we had to conceal their identities. They spent almost two hours here. After they finished, they just carry us. They go inside bush. On the way going, my wife fainted. Can't get up again. They consolate us one by one. In each house, when they carry us, six houses when they carry Peking, they carry their Peking. Some they carry the father go. They say, make we go back, go find money. If not money, we like. The last way that we did, they selected us. They selected people that they know, say that they cannot, they don't have strength again to work. So they selected about five of us. Carry six people again. Continue their journey. This is the bush path through which the abductors left with their captives before a combined team of police and vigilante responded to the distress call. Uh, all this was just happened tonight. They just sat there around 12 night they start. For that 12, the call starts. How is before that 12, 30 starts down to us? This is the road where they follow. We must trace them, reach, reach like a two kilometer before we get those uh, five people they release. As we put a call to the police and the rest authority in security, they find it very difficult to come for the rescue because due to the road bar, uh, due to the bad roads we have, had it been the road as smoother than they are, I'm very sure that those abducted would have not gone like that. We will rescue all with the help of the police and the vigilante. A few days later, the remaining victims returned to their families with the community still in shock. The incidents occurred when residents of the nation's capital are still coming to terms with a purported internal memo from the Nigeria Customs Service. The memo identified some locations within and around the federal capital territory where Boko Haram elements may be regrouping for a possible attack on the nation's capital. The locations identified in the memo include Kunyam Bush along Airport Road of DIA staff quarters, Rubuchi Gwagwalada Forest, Kwaku Forest in Kuje. Unesha Forest in total local government area of Nasarawa State and Gegu Forest close to Idu Town in Kogi State. This raised some concerns among residents of the nation's capital. Ordinarily, what they should have done was to liaise 
with the state security service, which is the intelligence gathering uh, agency for the country, you know, to, because it caused a lot of panic, which is bound to a lot of panic and uh, it, it jolted the members of the public, you know, with that kind of information. The government must take appropriate measures in terms of such information. Uh, it could just be a coincidence because we've been recording such uh, incidents in uh, Kuje, the outskirts of Abuja, you know, Abaji, uh, Duse, and the rest of them. So it could just be a coincidence that it happened immediately, they said it. But that is not to say that the information should have been swept under the co uh, carpet. Before now, there have been reports of kidnapping similar to the one reported in Tunga Maje. There have been several reports of abductions in the FCT, especially in rural communities. On November 26, 2019, a traditional ruler in Rubuchi community in Kuje Area Council was kidnapped by unknown gunmen. On December 23, 2019, two persons were abducted in Keti Village, Kabusa District, in the Abuja Municipal Area Council. A student of Federal Government College, Rubuchi, was also abducted on January 28, 2020. In two years, we had more than, let's say, like, um, not more than eight kidnapped different, different cases where people are taken in mass, where people will be taken. There were times that we had um, issues that about 12 people were kidnapped and they were asked to pay ransom and they had to pay ransom. Even one of the, 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 the village health son was killed. Over the years, Boko Haram terrorists have carried out high-profile attacks in the nation's capital, including the attack on the force headquarters, the bombing of the United Nations building, the Yanya bus park explosions, the Christmas Day bombing of Madala Catholic Church, the attack in the Banex area of the city centre, and the bombing of the This Day newspaper office in Utako. The military roadblocks at the entry point into the city center have become more strict, while a joint team of security agencies held a show of force around the city center. Sequel to the security alert by a purported memorandum from the Nigerian Customs Service warning its staff on a possible attack on the FCT. The defense headquarters once again wish to reassure residents of the FCT and other adjoining states that the armed forces of Nigeria and other security agencies have been on red alert to combat crime and ensure effective surveillance of the FCT and other states of the country. Meanwhile, during a meeting with the delegation of the Army Headquarters Garrison, the Minister of the FCT, Mala Mohamed Bello, wants the security agencies to intensify efforts to curtail any threat to the nation's capital. For us to be able to secure our communities, it is very important for us to have credible intelligence. And also for us to ensure that all the policies enunciated that are meant to make us live harmoniously and have peace have to be enforced. So I think these critical two issues are issues that are not new to you. We'll continue to call upon you to support us in our various teams and committees that try to enforce regulations and also proactively contain threats these kidnappings and other forms of organized crime are gaining prominence in the nation's capital. It remains so, even as the police arrest some of the criminals on a daily basis. My guest on the program is retired Commissioner of Police, Lawrence Alobi, who was the Commissioner of Police for the Federal Capital Territory at the time when Comrade Adams Oshomole was Labour leader. Now those were protest days. He retired in 2007 and since then has been very vocal in calling for police reforms. He walks us through challenges he faced tackling insecurity in Abuja and what needs to be done today to keep FCT residents safe. CP Alobi, welcome to Dateline. Thank you for having me. You know, I want to start by taking a look at the national, uh, the national picture 
on security. Um, the killings that happened in Borno recently is threatening to be the last straw that will break this camel's back. And I really wanted to get your thoughts on what the government should be doing differently, considering that uh, the killings in Borno uh, necessitated the call by some lawmakers for the president to come to the National Assembly. We'll get to that. But mostly the call for him to, you know, sack the service chiefs. What should the government be doing differently to tackle the situation? You know, thank you very much. Uh, actually, that killing of those farmers is a very, a very sad situation, very disturbing, very embarrassing to the country. Section 14B of the Constitution provides that the prime purpose of government is security and welfare of the citizens. And if citizens cannot be protected, then how, what about their well-being, their livelihood? These are farmers who produce food, so at least to ensure that uh, we have food in the country. They were just groups of being murdered by, by Boko Haram. That, that is very, very bad. On this show, you see, generally, everybody, every, Nigeria, every continent in Nigeria should be disturbed. Every life is important to, 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 to this country. Look at what happened to the American. One individual was kidnapped, and the American government organized for him to be rescued because they valued their citizens. We, Nigerians, should learn to value our, we should learn to value our citizens, and that is why Mr. President recently made a, a clarion call to all traditional rulers, all stakeholders, all citizens to assist, to assist, assist the agency in, in the promotion of peace and security. And that is, I think, he has realized that security is not just for the government alone or government institutions, but security for everybody, because the citizens are the prime beneficiary of a safe and secure environment. When they security in the community or in, in the country, the citizens benefit, that the citizens also have a role. So I think what the government should also see that the government should address the issue of security by ensuring that security agencies are well-equipped, well-funded, and, 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 and motivated. Because when that, you cannot, you cannot ask a child to go and fetch water with bare hands. You need to equip that child. You need to arm the, give the child the, 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 what he should use to, 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 to bring water to you. You know, I wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, the, the call for the president to sack the service chiefs. Is that something he should even be considering right now? You know, see, see this, it is Mr. President's prerogative to sack, to sack, to appoint, to, to, to hire and fire. It is at his discretion. No law says this person will be there or that person will be there. It is at his discretion. He knows, he understands as chief of uh, command. No, as, as a former CP, would you, would you think, would you advise him to if you, if you had his ear? Would you tell him that this is something he should be considering right now? And now, first and foremost, you see, there are a lot of dynam the dynamics of the security dynamics. Really, it is very, very disturbing. Um, the security of the service chiefs were appointed by him. He knows if they are if they are if they are del giving the, the, the uh, del delivering the, the, the in line with his the mandate, his mandate and his his uh, he, in his when he came on, on board, he said security, corruption, and economy was where his uh, man three points of his mantra mantra. So if the service chiefs are able to meet his his uh, his his, uh, his uh, goal or his, his, his what is what he intend to achieve for Nigerians, then all well and good. But if he he want to assess them, I, even if I assess them, it has of no meaning. But I think Mr. Mr. President should look at what is what his service chiefs are doing and what is on ground. Are they really living up to expectations? Are they living up to the expectations of Nigerians? Are they living up to expectations of his government? If not, he, has, he should take a decision, make a decision. Well, recently the, the, the House of Representatives asked the President to come and address them on the security situation in the country. The President initially said he was going to make that meeting. Uh, and, but suddenly uh, we saw a letter, actually it's a statement really, from the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation, basically questioning the, the constitutionality of the National Assembly, asking the President to come and brief on the security situation in the country. And I remember that one of the things Mr. Malami said in that statement is the fact that these are things that the president is privy to. These security briefings and these sorts of information should not be out in the public domain. And we also saw some APC chieftain saying, look, the person you should be asking to come to the National Assembly to brief you on security are the security chiefs. What are your thoughts on that statement by Mr. Malami and Mr. President not showing up? for that meeting as he promised to. You see, Mr. President is the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. Governance is all about cooperation and collaboration, not competition. The way it is now, we have the legislature, we have the executive and the judiciary. The arms of government should collaborate together and come together and work for the good of this country. Because competition and competition and, uh, it brings about intrigues, manipulation. Security, that like we all know, it's, it's our, everybody's uh, uh, business. So for me, I don't, I don't want to join issues with the Attorney General. 
but I don't know the wisdom behind it. Because governance is all about collaboration and cooperation. The legislature and the executive should cooperate together. What a common purpose, common goal. I don't think, except I don't know, except maybe the, 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 the House of the, the National Assembly has any hidden agenda. If we have with good intention, for the good of the country, for, the, for the, to ensure that security of this country is improved, I don't think anything wrong, Mr. President, going to address the House. Do you think I, he should he should think he should think again? Do you I think, think Mr. President should 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 rethink because uh, um, should rethink and not all advice. What I'm, the important thing is that what is the interest of this country? That advice by, Ms. by the AG. Uh, is for me it is it is it is not it's not supposed to be made because Mr. President for the people he has been going he has been going to the National Assembly presenting budget for begging proposal for the country he has been doing that so what what is it about even state governors are involved in security local government are involved in security and look what are on now committee committee policies about the people and so if the government policies are all geared and implemented towards the better society and the peace and security of this country. Talk to us a bit of some of the, the areas in the FCT that were flashpoints and flashpoints for insecurity or kidnapping and things like that. And if, you know, years after you've left service, are those places still flashpoints? Is the situation in the FCT better? You see, when, when I was CPFC, there was nothing like uh, kidnapping. We had the, 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 the Onion Boys, the One Chance, and so forth. And then in, in quality, there was that that was community clash, clash between the various groups, political groups in, uh, in Kuali. I had to institute the, the, com uh, the, the town hall meetings. I addressed them. I said, look, look we're like fingers of one hand. They're not of equal side. They don't fight each other. Leaves of one tree. They look at your hair. How many hairs, hairs on your head? They don't fight each other. Human beings were created with the image of God and likeness. Why don't you have to? God is a God of peace. Uh, they are both challenging, you know, dynamics of security dynamics, crime dynamics. You know, like I said, when I was in, nothing like, there was nothing like kidnapping. We used to have, the, used to have uh, the uh, onion, one, boys. onion Boys, One Chance, Just and Onion so Boys. I understand how the Onion Boys work. That yeah. I've seen the Orange Boys. No, I, what I, they do? They put nails, yeah. Like they put the nails onions, in the onions and throw it into the road. A, motor, a driver just come and known to him that those, those onions have some minerals inside. He mashes them. The next thing, the, the tires are punctured. You they come out and they've been attacked. So yeah. the so, but I, I introduced what I call crisscross patrol. Cross cross patrol, there's all patrols around the road, so there's no way they give them any breathing space. And also, I was able to check on young boys. I also I developed a strategy where I also checked the one chance during my, my time. I was able to read it to the better minimum. That I will not divulge you here because the strategy we, I don't need to tell you. But is the FCT safer now? Is it better now? I think it's safe, it's quite safe. It's quite safe. The commercial operator and these men are doing very well. Look at the answers here in our FCT. FCT. There wasn't much distortion like in other places. So, I think let's see FCT is in the seat of government and I think the commissioner police and officers of the, of, the, of the command are doing their best and I'm sure they are going to do better. It given the, the enablement, the training and the capacity to do, they will do better for the good of the citizens. CP Alobi, thank you so much for being with us on Dateline. Thank you too for having me, my pleasure. You really must let us know the happenings in your neighborhood, especially as the year draws to a close. You can reach us through the social media handles on your screen. And if you feel uncomfortable with anything going on around you, call the police on these numbers. Please stay safe. And that's our show today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kayla Magua. See you next time.